Jesus asked for a child to be born unto him. And then he said to his followers, And unless you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. The greatest person in the kingdom of heaven is the person that makes themselves humble like a child. I'm a very proud father of three beautiful boys. I've got Tyson, who's 11, Hunter, who's 9, and my youngest is Cormac, a little tiger at 4 years old. All of these boys distinctly different, vibrant in their own particular ways. But there's one quality that binds them all together, one quality that I aspire to, and I think many of us in this room aspire to. They're fearless. Let me give you some examples. My, uh, my youngest, Cormac, this is a couple of years ago now, he just he was just about to meet his, his uncle, his uncle Alan. Now, Uncle Alan has a very distinctive cleft in his chin. And we had them around for dinner, my sister and my brother and Laura, and we're all chatting away, and I noticed Cormac just sitting there, two years old, just sitting there looking at Alan's face. And, uh, and I was chatting with Alan, and then looking at Cormac and chatting with Alan, and I, then finally I see him nut drug to his mother and gently tap her on the shoulder. And she was a bit busy, she didn't hear me. She said, Mommy, she's looking at Alan. And she said, Yes, darling. He goes, Why has Uncle Alan got a bum on his chin? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we, we all looked at each other and for a split yes. second wondered what to think, and then we were cracked up laughing. Everyone except Cormac. He was sitting there still puzzled, going, When is someone going to answer my question? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Kids have a natural ability to just ask the question they want to ask. It's a quality we tend to lose as we get older. Then of course we have my eldest, Tyson. And he's big and strong like a Tyson should be. He's also innately and incurably curious. He's always asked from a very young age, what, how does this work, what does this do? You know those three little letters that join together, that question, why, 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 that drives parents crazy? That's it. One day we're driving, I'm driving him home from school, and he's sitting in the back seat and we're chatting away, and suddenly he hits me with a real corker. He says, Dad, which is faster? I'm thinking, okay, come on, drop me out. A bee or a kangaroo? <laughs> so I thought for a second, I thought, okay, I probably know this. I thought for a second, I said, oh, just a minute, son. And then I thought, no, maybe I'll have to bluff him, because I actually don't know this. I'll, uh, I'll, I thought, I can't even bluff this one. And I, then I asked what every self respecting parent would. I will Google it when we get home. <laughs> and just a point of note, by the way, kangaroos top running speed, 65 kilometers an hour, and a bumblebee maxes out at 30. <laughs> but the curiosity and the wonder and the need to know more about the world and about life is another quality that I aspire to replicate wherever I possibly can. And then we have my third son. Well, he's actually my middle son, but I'm really going to last. He's a very special boy. His name's Hunter. He's full of life, full of energy. He's very theatrical. He's always doing the pose. He's coming up with songs. He's making us laugh. He's wonderful. He's full of life. And 18 months ago, he was also diagnosed as being full of leukemia. A beautiful boy. Some of the hardest news a parent has to hear. We had a lot of turmoil in the initial diagnosis. He was taken through the ringer with injections and blood tests and chemotherapy and finally one day he was due a blood transfusion. Now knowing his somewhat fragile state of mind I, I said to the nurse, I took the male nurse aside and said please before we do the blood transfusion can you please let me know, I need to be there, I, I don't know what he's going to do when he um, sees the blood hanging there and, and, and everything so please let me know. So we wa I waited for a while and eventually I felt like a couple so I wandered out and got a cup of coffee. And sure enough, when I came back, there was the nurse kneeling by the bed, and him and Hunter were looking up at this dark red package of blood slowly dripping its way down the line towards his chest. And I thought, I was looking at this, and I was looking at them, and I was looking at Hunter. We all looked at each other for a second, and then I heard Hunter say, whose blood is that? And I, I was just listening, frozen. And the nurse said, oh, I'm not sure. And then Hunter comes out with, is that the strongest man in the world's blood? <laughs> <laughs> and I, at that point, I, I swear a tear just 
trickled out of my face, and it wasn't a tear of sadness or pain or anything like that. It was a joy that a boy who was going through so much was able to be so present, to be able to be so engaged in the moment, even though what was ahead of him and what was behind him looked pretty dark. What a calling to us. I'd like to invite you now just to close your eyes briefly for a second. And I'd like you to cast yourself back a decade or two or three to when you were just a young man, a young boy or girl with fresh perspective on the world, crystal clear eyes, untainted by the modern world. And through those eyes now, look at your life. Look at what you're doing now. What are you missing? What quality that you used to use so well is not with you today. What quality that you had as a kid is not there to serve you the way it used to today. Visualize the word. Visualize the phrase. If you could please open your eyes and write that down. What is the word? What is the quality? What is the expression that you're missing today that you had in your grasp those years ago? Then stick that on your rear vision mirror or maybe on the sun visor. Stick it on the bathroom mirror and start reminding yourself this is important. This is important. These are the qualities I need to get through. You see, I'm not a religious kind of person. When Jesus said, talked of the kingdom of heaven, I took that to mean to live in a fearless way with no worry. To have a peace in your life that feels like a kingdom. When he talks about being humble like a child, he talks about self-expression curiosity and being in the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I implore you to pick up and try this quality.